All right, so y'all go ahead and do the factoring and the math knowledge question for today. Pause the video, and then once everyone is finished, you can unpause the video, and I'll go over the correct answers. So for the factoring, you should have x minus 14 times x plus 2. For the math knowledge question, we're not looking at sales tax. We want to know the total for the purchases. So he bought a pair of jeans for two-thirds of the original price. So two-thirds of 48 would be 36, no, $32. And then he bought a belt for 40% of its original price. And 40% of 1250 is five dollars so 32 plus 5 is 37 dollars so that would be your answer okay now we're going to be looking at lesson 19 today we're going to look at nonlinear systems factoring exponentials and then sum and difference of two cubes so hopefully after this lesson, you'll understand how your nonlinear systems work, how to factor exponentials, and the sum and difference of two cubes. All of this was covered in Algebra 2, so hopefully most of this will be review. So this is a nonlinear system because this top equation is not in terms of only x and y. It's x squared and y squared. So what we're going to want to do is to take the bottom equation and solve it for y. So, or you could solve it for x, either one. Um, but if we add x, y is going to equal x plus 1. So then we're going to have x squared plus, instead of y squared, we're going to put x plus 1 squared equals 9. From there, you're going to distribute. And then I'm going to move everything over to the left side and combine my like terms to make it 2x squared plus 2x minus 8 equals 0. So I can divide by 2 here. And I have x squared plus x minus 4 equals 0. That does not factor, unfortunately. If it did factor, then you would factor it to find your x values. Since it does not factor, we're going to have to use a quadratic formula. So these are going to be our x values. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a and then from there you're just going to simplify so we're going to have negative 1 plus or minus 1 plus 16 all over 2 so that is negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 17 which doesn't reduce over 2. So that's two different x values. One of them is negative 1 half plus the square root of 17 over 2, and the other one is negative 1 half minus the square root of 17 over 2. So those are your two x values. Now we're going to have to find our y values. So the way that you find your y values is to plug into this equation here. So negative 1 half plus the square root of 17 over 2 plus 1, which is the same thing as 2 over 2. So we can only combine the negative 1 half and the 2 over 2 to make that a positive 1 half plus the square root of 17 over 2. So that would be your other, or that would be your y value for the first one. Now for the second point, we're going to have negative 1 half minus the square root of 17 over 2 and then plus 1 which is 2 over 2. So if you add those you get 1 half minus the square root of 17 over 2. And so that would be your two answers. You have to make sure that you put your x's with the correct y value. If you have these switched then it's not going to be correct. Um, so make sure that they are exactly like they're supposed to be. Okay, so now we're going to look at another example. This one has x squared and y squared for both of the equations. So we're going to add them together. 
because the x squared and the y squared, they're exactly the same. So we can actually eliminate those because we have plus y squared and minus y squared. On the last example, we couldn't do elimination because we had an x squared and we had an x. So you can only eliminate if they're either both x's or y's or both x squared or y squared. So if we do elimination, we end up with 3x squared equals 3. And then if you divide by 3, x squared equals 1. And then you can take the square root. And so the square root of 1, this is where people mess up. You have to put plus or minus in front of your answer. So the square root of 1 is 1, but it's positive or negative 1. Because negative 1 squared equals 1 just like 1 squared equals 1. So on this one, I have an x value of 1 and an x value of negative 1. So now we're going to plug it in, and I'm going to plug it into the top equation. So if I plug in 1 squared plus y squared equals 9, I get 1 plus y squared equals 9, so y squared equals 8. And then when you take the square root, what do you have to do when you take the square root? You have to put plus or minus. And then the square root of 8 reduces to 2 square roots of 2. So we actually get two different y values for this 1x value. So we get 1 and then positive 2 square roots of 2. We also get 1 and negative 2 square roots of 2. When we plug in negative 1, negative 1 squared is 1 plus y squared equals 9. So y squared equals 8. And then if you take the square root, y equals plus or minus 2 square roots of 2. So when we plugged in negative 1, we got a positive 2 square roots of 2, and we got a negative 2 square roots of 2. So we actually end up with four answers on this one. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a help here. If you have x and y only, you're going to have one solution, one answer. If you have x, y, and an x squared or a y squared, then you're going to have two solutions. And if you have only x squared and y squared, then you're going to have four. Okay, so that's how that'll work. All right, so now we're going to look at one more nonlinear system. This one's different. There aren't any squares, but it's just x times y. So what you're going to want to do on this one is substitute. So instead of a y here, I'm going to put negative x minus 2. So we're going to have x times negative x minus 2 equals negative 4. If you distribute, you get negative x squared minus 2x equals negative 4. And then I'm going to move everything to the right side. So that's going to become x squared plus 2x minus 4. And hopefully it would factor. Unfortunately, it doesn't factor, so we're going to have to use the quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus b squared, so 2 squared would be 4, and then minus 4, our a is 1, and our c is negative 4. And then all over 2 times 1. So that gives us negative 2 plus or minus 4 plus 16, which is 20, all over 2. So we want to reduce our radical if we can. So the square root of 20 is the same thing as 2 square roots of 5, and then all over 2. And now we can actually reduce this because 2, 2, and 2, those all three divide by 2 to give us a 1. So we'd have negative 1 plus or minus 1 square root of 5. So our x values would be negative 1 plus the square root of 5 and negative 1 minus the square root of 5. Now to get your y values, you're going to want to plug it in. And I think it's easiest to plug it into this equation here. So we're going to do negative, negative 1 plus the square root of 5 minus 2. So that's going to be 1 minus the square root of 5 minus 2. 
which is negative 1 minus the square root of 5. So I got negative 1 minus the square root of 5 for this one. And I'm going to do the same thing for this other x value. So negative, negative 1 minus the square root of 5 minus 2 would be 1 plus the square root of 5 minus 2, which is negative 1 plus the square root of 5. So that's my second y value. And so that would be your answer here. Just those two. Okay, so now we're going to move on to factoring exponentials. We want to factor these. So the 3 and the 4, we can factor out a 3 from them. And if we factor out a 3, we're left with a 1. And if we factor out a 12, we're left with a 4. So that's the first step you would do. Then we're going to go to our x's. We have two n's and we have three n's. So the most that we can take out is two of them. And so that would leave zero n's here. And that would leave one n here. Because when you're multiplying, you add. So 2n plus 0n is the 2n. And then 2n plus 1n is the 3n. And then we have 2 and 3. The most that we can pull out is a 2. So we have 0 left here. And we have 1 left here. And so then the way that you write your answer is going to be 3x to the 2n plus 2. And then x to the 0 times a 1 is just 1. You have to put the 1 because it's your placeholder. And then plus 4 x to the n plus 1. So that's your answer for that one. So that's all you have to do for factoring exponentials. We're going to look at another one, another type of question. We want to factor these. So I'm going to start off with x squared minus y squared. That would factor as x minus y times x plus y. If I put an a here and a b here, then it's going to be a, b, a, and b. Because when you multiply, you're adding the exponent. So a plus a is 2a, and then b plus b is 2b. So the way that x to the 2a minus y to the 2b factored is x to the a minus y to the b times x to the a plus y to the b. And then the denominator doesn't factor. And then if you look, this term here cancels with this term. And so we are left with just x to the a minus y to the b. And so that would be your answer there. Okay, so now we're going to look at some sum and difference of cubes formulas. So you may have seen these before. a cubed plus b cubed is a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. And then a cubed minus b cubed is a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. So these two look very, very similar. Um, the only difference is the signs. And so I've got a little um, song that I found on YouTube that we're going to go through to help y'all hopefully remember how the signs work. I'm going to play through it again. I'm going to turn it up just a little bit in case it wasn't loud enough. Um, just to let you listen to it again one more time. So hopefully that helps you a little bit with remembering the signs.
the first one is the same as whatever is here. So this is a plus, so this one's a plus. Or this one's a minus, so this one's a minus. And then these are always opposite of this one right here. And then these last ones are always plus. They're always going to be a positive. So hopefully that helps you a little bit with the formula. You do have to learn these, and they're not going to be given to you. So make sure that you practice um, memorizing these two formulas. So we're going to factor these. So we're going to be using the difference of cubes formula. And the reason I know that, there's a minus sign here. So a cubed minus b cubed is a minus b times a squared plus ab plus b squared. And so on your test, if you'll actually write that out, I can tell you, yes, that's right, or no, it's this part, or whatever part it is that's messed up on your formula. So our a cubed is x cubed y cubed. So a is going to be the cube root of that, which is just going to be xy. And then our b cubed is p cubed, so minus just p. And then if we square this, we'll have x squared y squared plus p times xy and then plus p squared. So that's going to be your answer there. If you know your formula, then that's really all you have to do is just plug it into the formula. Without the formula though, these are a lot more difficult to do. So we're going to look at one more. This one's going to be a cubed plus b cubed because there's a plus sign right here. So that's going to be a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. So our a is 8m cubed y to the 6. So the cube root of all of that is 2my squared. And then plus x. And then we're going to square this. So that's going to be 4m squared y to the 4th. And then minus 2mxy squared. And then plus x squared. And so that would be your answer for that factoring question. Okay, so hopefully that helps you with your sum and difference um, formulas. For your cubes, you definitely need to learn those. Your homework, you do get to omit number 15, 24, and 25. So you only have 27 problems to do, so make sure you do those so we can answer any questions you have tomorrow.